We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. So, we have our freshly restored fireplace mantle. Beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> that turned out nice. Really nice. Okay, well in this episode, we have a few things to do, a couple of projects that we've left unfinished in the other bedroom over here, we're gonna go ahead and take care of those. But before we do that, I wanna show you what happened yesterday. These old fashioned windows have cast iron weights in the walls and then they have cords which run up over a pulley and the weights equals the weight of the window, in theory, the wood and all the glass. And so you should be able to just pick it up, lift it up and down real easy. But we've been doing that, and this window has been perfect ever since we moved in here. And so yesterday, when we finished up the last video where we did the fireplace mantle restoration, we were cleaning up, and I reached up, and I pulled the window down. All of a sudden, both sash weights simultaneously broke, and the window just kind of went bang. So this old house here, she's got a sense of humor. One project for this other room is the door hinges. We got them. And you can't just go down to any hardware store and pick them up. You've got to get real good ones. They've got to be historic of some kind. They've got to be beautiful. And we found House of Antique Hardware. They have beautiful ones, all kinds. These are the ones we chose for this room. They come with a whole bunch of screws. They're heavy weight too. This is nice. Let's open them up. See what they look like. Beautiful. Look at that. Opens up. Oh, oh, they're prettier on the inside. Look at that. Ah, this is beautiful. I absolutely love these. These are even more ornate and beautiful than the originals. Well, the first order of business is taking off the old hinge. This ratty old thing. Now notice that it has one big eye here and then the door has two eyes that made up with it. You can't find those anymore at the big box stores or hardware stores. They used to be very common, but the modern ones have many more than that. I think some of our doors up in New York had singles like there was one on the door and one at the frame. Those are even harder to find. You sharp-eyed carpenters out there will probably notice that these two screws were driven right straight into the gap between the trim board and the door frame. And you'll also notice that the other two screws were driven into the trim board, which is crazy. The whole thing should actually be driven into the door frame. I might as well just take these screws out by hand because they have no bite. And they're just in the way right now. This is a big problem with a lot of older houses where people have just taken a paintbrush and slathered paint over the hardware. It actually gets in the slots. When there's paint in the slot, you can't get the screwdriver to stay in. It's still just barely able to come at it from the other direction. Check out the details on this antique screw here. 
It has all the normal threads, but look at this. There are sp spiral grooves cut into the shank. That's really interesting. Okay, let's compare our hinges. So this is the original. This one has two eyes. This one has one eye. They go together like this. And then the pin goes in and holds the whole thing together. Well, it's the same thing with the new one. You have two eyes. And one eye, the two go together. And then the pin goes in and holds the whole thing together. One thing we did notice that's not really a big deal is these are both opposite. So this one has the ball. But they're like this, see? They're completely opposite each other, like mirror images. But one thing that I do note here is that they're both solid. This one here appears to be uh, either pot metal coated with copper or solid copper. I'm just not really sure. This one here is definitely pure brass. And it's made to mimic the Victorian style, but I think these were actually, if I'm not mistaken, I think they were made in India. Okay. Now we want to put the side that has two eyes on the door frame. And then the door piece will come and sit down in the middle like that. They sure put a lot of screws in there. Both hinges have their own bag full of screws like this. Um, and it looks like they have Phillips head screws on the bottom here, and then the middle compartment is standard head screws. I saw that and I thought, old houses don't have Phillips head screws in them. They always had standard head screws. So I'm really glad to see they included both for historical authenticity. The last time we saw this drill, it was very broken. The chuck was completely jammed and I couldn't make it loosen up or tighten up. So I contacted DeWalt. They sent me a label. We boxed it up and shipped it to the repair center and it came back to us in perfect condition. So I have a drill bit in here. I put a piece of blue tape on here to act as a drill stop. It doesn't actually stop the drill, but it gives me an indication of how far I have to drill before I do stop. We chose this replacement hinge because it has the same hole pattern as what the original hinge had, but the locations are slightly different. When you lay it up here, you can see that the holes don't exactly line up. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this drill bit here, which is a quarter inch, and it has the tape on there to tell me when to stop drilling. And then I have this, which is called dowel. It's a quarter inch diameter. So after I drill a quarter inch hole, I'll cut off a piece of this, I'll put some glue on there, and then I'll put it in the hole and then let it sit. So what that does is it restores the wood to a solid condition, and then we can go back and drill new holes for the hinge. I'm going to insert the dowel all the way in, and then I'll take a Sharpie, a fine tip Sharpie, and I'll just make a mark there where it needs to be cut. Take a hacksaw and just very carefully cut a little plug. Okay, so here's a plug. I'm just gonna take all the burrs off of it. I'm taking my plug and I'm putting some glue on it this is an old carpenter's trick. If you need to fill a small hole, you can drill it out and put a plug in it. Okay, take the hammer and just tap it in. All right. And now we'll do the same thing to all of the holes. When this dries in a few hours, it'll be stronger than the wood itself.
And here's the finished repair. Now let's do the top one. That finishes that one. That's only half of the job. Now we need to do the same thing to the door. Good as new. Now we just walk away for an hour and then we can come back and do the rest. This morning is unusually cold, <laughs> really cold, but we wanted to show you all the flowers that are blooming. There are so many and they are beautiful. Do you see all the colors back there? The dogwood started blooming, although this looks like a sad specimen compared to the one over there. We had no idea we had so many beautiful azaleas. Look at all these different colors. These are beautiful pink with a little bit of dark pink in there. Absolutely gorgeous. This one, like the first one, but much more mature. Look at all these beautiful blooms. And yet another kind of pink. We got so many different colors of pink, it's beautiful. Some more light pink flowers. All these flowers in a row, multi different colors. I love it. So beautiful back here. Look at all of these. Oh, I love those flowers. <laughs> the dowels are now firmly glued in place and we have a solid wood surface. So I'm going to go ahead, put the hinge in place and drill some pilot holes. Now let's put those screws in. It is okay to use a power driver on these, but I like to get them hand started first. The pilot hole gives the screw a place to go to, and I'm getting it started by hand. These standard head screws are much harder to drive than Phillips head, but they hadn't invented Phillips yet when this house was built, so we're using what they had. Okay, I'm going to leave that just a little bit loose.
The reason I'm going so slow is because this wood is really, really old, and I don't want to just ram the screw in there and, and split the wood. Okay, so I'm almost all the way down. I'm going to try to finish it off by hand. I'm doing this because I can feel what the screw is doing. If I'm using the drill, I can't feel what's happening and I might overdrive it. Now we'll do the same thing with the other hinge. I'm using the hinge that has the two eyes on it with the ball facing down. Well, this doesn't quite fit. So, I think we're talking a fraction of an inch, maybe less than a sixteenth, like the thickness of a couple of pieces of paper. So I'm gonna take this chisel and I'm going to just give it the slightest little bit of cut right there. Okay, that's a pretty good fit. I'm going to lubricate this because all of the weight of the door bears down on that one surface right there. It doesn't bear down on this, it bears down on that. So I got oil in there now. I'm going to go ahead and lubricate the hinge pins. And then I'm going to come up here and do the other one. And that door should last a long time. Okay, how far do I have to go to get up there? You have approximately three quarters of an inch. Okay, these old doors are super heavy, so we have a piece of wood and a pry bar, and we're going to try to lift the door up and then push it up onto its hinges. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we need it right in there somewhere. Right there. Okay, great. All right, now let it down. Okay, perfect. Now, do you have the hinge pins? They're over there. Not yet. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to lift up on it. While the lower hinge is engaged, I'm going to go ahead and lift up on this and see if we can't get the upper hinge also. And I've got some kind of uh, reluctance going on up there. Can you see what the problem is? It looks like one is 
This one's too high. Okay. All right. If, can you grab a hold of this and hold on to it for me? You got it? You got it? Don't, yes. Don't let it fall out. You got it? Yes. Okay. All right. So, so this is too high and that's too low. So I'm going to see if I can, just a fraction of an inch. I'm going to see if I can just tap that up. Oh, that was so close. So close. Okay, keep a hold of it there. Don't, okay. Right, you, you can let it down to the floor. Just, just don't let it. Just don't let it move, all right? Okay, I'm gonna go around the other side and uh, loosen up the screws a little bit. Okay. Loosen the one on the door too. Yeah, you'll have to swing it towards me. Um, okay. Swing it like that. Let's put this block of wood under it, maybe if, if it'll fit. I don't know if it will. No, it's too thick, isn't it? It is. Okay. All right. Just just let it down. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yes. Keep it straight. This is our second try. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Right. okay. Now, we should be able to just set this right up in there. It should just fit. I got this side. You got it? Okay. Yeah. All right. I think not want to fit. All right, bring it up. I feel like it's just about. I got it. Bring it up. Came out. Huh? We came out of the bottom. Oh, bummer. All right, take it back out. So what I did is I trimmed off just a little bit of wood under here so the hinge can float up and down this way slightly, and it's loose. So we're going to try a little bit different tactic, and we'll lift it up and see if we can't get the top hinge in first and then see if the bottom hinge goes. Okay, all right, if you want to get down there on the crowbar, okay. lift up on that, let's see if we can't get the top piece in. Yeah, go ahead. Go. That's a pretty snug fit anyway. Okay, keep that just like it is. Okay. I wonder if we grabbed the wrong hinge. Like if the, the pairs got separated and the, uh, the wrong pieces are on here. I mean, they should fit, but they might be a little bit custom. But the top is in. I think we can get it in there. So how about the bottom now? Okay, take that crowbar out. Yep, yep. Let's see, see if we can't get that bottom hinge to... Just try it. It's, uh, you're pushing too hard this way. I can't move at all. It's 
not going in. Not at all. Okay, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to knock it in. Okay, good. Everything's still good? Yes. Okay. All right. I think we've succeeded. Just don't let that fall out. I don't think it would come out if I wanted it to. Okay. We're just about there. Let me grab a hinge pin. Okay, so it needs to go, needs to go that way. Okay, ready? Yep. Again. Whoop. Did that work? Kind of. Come in here and, and uh, grab a hold of the door so you can control it. Can you pull it towards you ever so slightly? There you go. That's what it took. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tap that in place. Tap that in place. Now I have some screws that I have to tighten back up. Let's put the doorknob back on here before we proceed any further. It's a great idea. As far as we can tell, these are original to the house. All right, let's see how well this door closes now. Okay, it's hitting right there. If I twist the knob so that it doesn't hit the striker. It does go up here and, and close. If you remember, this door used to always hit right here and it would never close at all and we determined that the hinges needed adjustment. Well, in fact, they were just completely worn out. So now that we have new hinges on here, it is capable of closing, but the latch isn't working. And the reason is twofold. I've got some paint here. So let's go ahead and scratch that off. That's better. And over here, we have paint over here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and scratch that off. There's several coats of paint on there, different colors. I'm seeing green, yellow, white. So I'm just clearing off the area where the striker is. Okay, now I'm also feeling there's a kind of a ridge right there where, where it's been striking for years. So I'm gonna go grab a file and see if I can straighten that out. All I'm doing is taking off the burrs. What we want is for the door latch to slide smoothly over this metal plate.
Okay, that feels a lot better. I'm gonna put a little dab of oil on there. And another one here. Still not perfect. And there's still some more paint on here, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. I'm just going really gentle with this file. I don't want to gouge it, I just want to get it smooth. Yeah, I'm still feeling a burr up here. Let's see if I can't get that burr off there. This burr was caused by years of doors opening and closing without being lubricated. So you end up with metal on metal. Okay, now I have a nice soft round edge here. Nice and smooth. That part's working fine. The rest of the door latch mechanism is kind of stiff and it probably needs to be taken apart, cleaned and oiled. And then I think everything would be just fine. But as far as the striker goes, that part's fine now. Well, before we close this project, I just wanted to show you these beautiful Victorian hinges. 